get comfortable, you know? Um, and even though Palm Springs, I don't know if you guys been there, uh, it's like an LGBT town, like, Arash and I, we basically had to, I was thinking about like sitting diagonally across from him when we were going out to eat, just to make sure <laughs> we don't blend. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I think first night that I actually arrived there, we felt an earthquake, like there was like a mild earthquake and I was like, what's going on Arash? And he was like, did you feel that? I was like, yeah. Anyway, Sodom and Gomorrah, level two, I guess. Uh, you know, it's about any, any time um, that they're gonna, that they'll probably get annihilated one way or another, I guess. Um, anyways, does anyone not know this guy? You know, he's, uh, he's the number one villain in the world, I guess. Everybody um, everybody knows him as uh, being, uh, I mean, he's, his name was even mentioned by the messenger, so you can imagine, like, how bad this guy, this guy could be. But, um, but uh, that what I wanted to really talk about was... Um, uh, the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're righteous or if you're a hypocrite or whatever. You always think that, um, I mean, righteous people, it's a little different, which I'll get to. But usually people, they think that they're doing good. They think that they're, they're guided and they're serving a good cause, right? They're striving, they you know, have a purpose and it's a good purpose. And it doesn't matter who it is, right? So, which I, the reason why I brought Hitler here with... Uh, because there's, you know, we know that um, even someone like him, as bad as him, he had justification for his evil behavior, you know, and and uh, well, we know what we did, <laughs> what he did to the Jews, and we understand because we know the system that obviously the Jews deserved it, um, but nevertheless, um, um, Hitler did not think that he was evil. He actually think that he was doing something right. Um, so. I was looking into it. I would, wanted to kind of investigate to see, okay, why do people, uh, I mean, why did uh, Hitler hate the Jews so much? And, you know, you can't really know for sure because he never got caught. I guess they, they never interrogated him or anything. So there, there are theories out there um, that talks about the reason why that could be the case. And... Um, they're pretty funny. Like one, one, one of them was that a Jewish doctor failed to save, save his mother. His mother, you know, had, she was ill and the doctor failed to save him. And then that, you know, led him to have this like hatred towards the Jews. Um, but I mean, he must have been crazy if that was the case. Um, and then the second one that I came across was that uh, there was the Jerusalem grand religious leader from like 1921 to 1937 advised Hitler to burn all the Jews. And this, this seems like to be the, the pro-Palestinian ideology, I guess, or theory. So, um, and then there was another one that, that I've heard where um, it says that uh, he was born uh, in Austria. He was, at the beginning of his life, he was in Austria. And he witnessed um, that the Jews were involved to, like, they bought all the agricultural goods. And they raised the price. A lot of people, uh, because of that, ended up starving. And, and that led to Hitler having like these thoughts about the Jews and how he wanted to like exterminate them. Um, and then another one, which this one's pretty popular too, is that he, he was a soldier during World War I. And then uh, he was blaming the, Jew, the Jewish community uh, for Germany's defeat in the war. Um, you know, as you can see, this was like a popular uh, picture that, um, you know, in, in those days, the stab in the back legend, you know, uh, so many Germans, like, believed that they wouldn't have lost the war uh, on the battlefield if the Jews hadn't betrayed them at the home front. So, like, that's, that's very common. Um, but, however, the German government, you know, investigated the matter, found that, you know, it was propaganda against the, Jew, against the Jews because thousands of Jews fought in the, uh, in the war for their homeland. So, I mean, you know, um, again, it's one of those theories out there. And then another one that I recently found out about, this is pretty interesting. It was, uh, you know, in, the, in our Soapbox uh, um, group chat. Uh, if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. It's a pretty cool one. <laughs> you come across this anti, you know, LGBT content. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> but um, um, so that one basically is about how Germans, they, they hated the Jews because um, you know, LGBT, I think um, during 1919 to 1933, at the time, uh, there was like a strong LGBT movement. 
Um, it really, the, the, the country was extremely corrupt and the Jews were involved and, and then, you know, and then that basically gave rise to like strong personalities such as Hitler and then he became popular and the Germans loved him because he was strong enough to actually make a change. Um, and then as a result, he banished all the Jews and so on. Um, so, but these theories, they're there. Um, but I guess one thing that, that, a pattern that you see in all of these theories is that he always found a reason, right, to, to hate a community or to justify his actions. And, and also, basically, you know, all the other leaders, I mean, they have that in common. Uh, you know, they truly believe that they're doing something, you know, um, for a good cause and, and they have this, this mindset and they want to strive towards that goal. Um, and they don't care, you know, about any other, I guess, they don't care about the actions or the outcome. <clears throat> and, you know, we can, um, I mean, we can, we, we think of these people as like evil, right? But they themselves, they didn't perceive themselves as evil. They probably thought, you know, they were good. Um, and, I mean, we can be dictators too, right? You, you know, you can start from your home, you know, you can oppress your family into thinking you're helping them, you know, you put pressure on them for whatever reason. Um, but even Satan, right? Satan, he had this idea that he thought it was a good idea, right? So in the Bible, it says, You, Lucifer, said in your heart, I will scale the heavens above the stars of God. I will set up my throne. I will take my seat on the mount uh, of congregation in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So, so even he had like, you know, an idea that, was, that thought was a good idea. And then, um, and then in the Quran we learned that he even went to a point of justifying uh, that idea, right? Or, or, or the behavior. So, um, and as you can see in 716, he said, since you have willed that I go astray, I will skulk for them on your straight path. Um, and in the footnote says, Satan is a proven liar and so are his constituents. And then in 717, we'll lear uh, we learn that it says, I will, uh, Satan says, I will come to them from before them and from behind them and from their right and from their left. And you will find that most of them are unappreciative. So one thing we see that high justifying it is that he blames God, right? Um, that, that it was God that made him, you know, go astray. And uh, the other thing that you see is that he's actually thinking he's doing something useful, right? He's exposing all the humans. He's trying to show God how evil the human being is. And, um, and basically that, um, you know, he's serving that purpose, right? And then I came across a lot of verses that, you know, communicate with me how we as believers we can fall into that too. I mean, it's not just limited to like Hitler or Satan. You know, it can, it can happen to us, right? So, um, 41145, they think they're believers. The hypocrites will be committed to the lowest pit of hell and you will find no one to help them. Only those who repent, reform, hold fast to God and devote uh, their, religious their religion absolutely to God alone will be counted with the believers. God will bless the believers with a great recompense. Be aware, they believe that they are guided. Some he guided while others are committed to straying. They have uh, taken the devil as their masters instead of God, yet they believe that they are guided. So again, these are the people that um, they have t taken the devil as their masters and the, instead of God and they actually, you know, even though that's the case, they believe that they're guided. So. And then another one is invisible devilish companion, 4336. Anyone who disregards the message of the most gracious, we appoint a devil to be his co constant companion. Such companions will divert them from the path, yet make them believe that they're guided. So, and it says each one of us has a representative of Satan as, the, uh, as a constant companion. Oops, sorry, what happened here? pretty small. Okay, so true believers. Now, how do true believers, how can, as, I mean, hopefully for true believers, how do we go about this, right? So that we know this could be one, uh, one issue, right, a problem that we can fall into. 
Um, but what are some, I guess, what does God teaches us from the Quran, uh, steps that maybe we can take to overcome this? So there are four steps that I could think of. I mean, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's accurate or not, but, um, um, but basically um, there are four steps. One is that you identify the problem, you know, you investigate, you examine, you stay vigilant, you know, no wishful thinking. And the second step is to acknowledge the, the problem, acknowledge that there is a problem, there is an issue. And, and that is when you basically confess, when you take heed, when you admit that the problem is there, you kill the ego, you don't insist on it. And then the third one is when you decide to change, make a decision to change. And that's when you actually repent, right? Um, and, and, and the fourth one um, is that when you apply the change, right? So assuming you go through all those steps, then the last one is we actually make the change, right? You reform and you maintain that decision and you don't basically fall back into the, in, 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 into the same, same uh, sin. So the first one is identifying the problem, right? So the first one is to examine yourself, you know, not to think that you're, you're, you're doing good, you're on the right track, you always got to be vigilant, think about... Um, what could be going wrong, right? I guess one, one thing to think about is the consequences that are there. Um, you know, it, it helps us examine ourselves. The bigger the consequence, the bigger the problem. Um, so, so these are atten attention getters and, and we should be aware of them. And, and, and I guess we can think, you know, to ourselves like, okay, uh, you know, I guess as a believer, uh, I'm supposed to be like, do I have a problem right now? Do I have a problem in life? You know, what are uh, some of the signs that I feel? Um, do I feel happy? Am I annoyed? Does something bother me? Um, and can I come up with a list of problems, a list of issues? Uh, or um, do we make sure that we're observing all the commandments? Is that something we're aware of every day, right? Whenever we make a decision, whenever we, we're thinking about something, we're talking to someone, is that something we're consciously aware of? And and then, uh, are we being honest with ourselves, right? Do we rationalize or we actually we're truthful, right? We face it and, and we own it. So, <clears throat> examine yourself. Say, shall I tell you who the worst losers are? They are the ones who worked, uh, whose works in this life are totally astray, but they think that they're doing good. Such are the ones who disbelieved in the revelations of their Lord and in meeting Him. Therefore, their works are in vain. On a day of resurrection, they have no weight. The second step is acknowledging the problems, right? So believers take heed, they acknowledge the problem within them. And then the verses says 2549, with it we revive dead lands and provide drinks for our um, um, creations, multitudes of animals and humans. We have, this, uh, we have distributed among them in exact measure that they may take heed, but most people insist upon disbelieving, right? So you need to be intelligent to take heed. And then there are others who have confessed their sins, they have mixed good deeds with bad deeds, God will redeem them, and these are the people of the purgatory. Um, and then uh, believers versus disbelievers, um, it says that is one who recognizes that your Lord's revelation to you are the truth equal to one who is blind. Only those who possess intelligence would take heed. So the third one, is when the believers, they make the decision to actually change, right? So they do not just sit back, think that the problem will go away on its own. They actually have to do something to get rid of the problem. Uh, repentance, 417. Repentance is acceptable by God from those who fail in sin out of ignorance, who fall in sin out of ignorance, then repent immediately thereafter. God redeems them. God is omniscient, most wise. Believe for your own good. If you disbelieve, God does not need anyone, but he dislikes to see his servants make the wrong decision. If you decide to be appreciative, he's pleased for you. No soul bears the sins of any other soul. Ultimately to your Lord is your, um, is your return. Then he will inform you of everything you had done. He's fully aware of the innermost thoughts. And the last one is the, um, basically the application, right? Um, maintaining that decision and, and this, is, this is the part that actually shows in your action, right? I think the other three steps would be more mental. This is, this is like the, the, your actions, like what you actually do. Um, 
And, and this is how we can get rid of our impurities, right? So if you don't take action, if you don't actually change and maintain that, it, I mean, uh, the problems are going to be there, right? And, um, and, and, and I think, um, you know, you can only reform when you truly reach the conviction that you have that problem or that issue. If you don't think that, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to uh, strive to, to correct it. Uh, only those who repent, reform, hold fast to God, and devote their religion absolutely to God alone will be counted with the believers. God will bless the believers with a great recompense. And then, um, and then we can, you know, we can just sit here and think that, okay, our problems will go away. And uh, we learn from the Quran that we're supposed to take a hint. We're supposed to reform and God warns us says who is who is more evil than one who is reminded of these revelations of his Lord then insists upon disregarding them right so even if for example let's say you you do recognize the problem you take action but you don't actually change right you could be still insisting on disregarding that commandment which we know that could be a could be a big problem okay two bella rest repent Alhamdulillah, Praise be to God, there is no other God besides God and He has no partners. I uh, also forgot there's no announcements for today. We're, we're, we're having the meeting at 6.30, right? Yeah, so 6.30, we're having a discussion, inshallah. We can make it great. Um, and I guess no charity. Or no, Siraj, where's Siraj? Oh, no charity, okay. All right. Okay, so disbelievers. So this is another... Um, um, I guess part of the sermon that I wanted to, you know, to sort of see, because I've, I've, I've noticed that the disbelievers, they, um, they follow these steps, right? But, but I guess it doesn't really count, because by the time they realize it, is that, um, you know, it's, it's too late. So, um, well, they do three of them. I guess the last one is because it's, it shows in your action, uh, it's, 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 it's different, but but basically, they identify the problem on a day of resurrection. So uh, that, is when, that is when each soul will examine everything it had done. They will be returned to God. Their rightful Lord and Master and the idols that had fabricated will disown them. We have sufficiently warned you about an imminent retribution. That is a day when everyone will examine what his hands have sent forth. And the disbelievers will say, oh, I wish I were dust. And they acknowledge that the problem is there, right? So, uh, 6, uh, 130, all you gens and humans, did you not receive messengers from among you who narrated to you my revelations and warned you about the meeting of, of this day? He will say, we bear witness against ourselves. They were totally preoccupied with the worldly life and they will bear witness against themselves, but they were, the, but they were disbelievers. God alone, the disbelievers confess. So this is actually, they, they confess too, right? So it says those who disbelieve will be told God's abhorrence towards you is even worse than your own abhorrence towards yourself. For you were invited to believe, but you chose to disbelieve. God alone, the disbelievers to death. They will say, our Lord, you have put us to death twice. You gave us two lives. Now we have confessed our sins. Is there any way out? And also, it can happen, you know, on the... On the uh, during the time of death, like we have the example of Pharaoh, where he actually truly like decided to change. He wanted to, you know, put it all, you know, aside and 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 submit to God. We delivered the children of Israel across the sea. Pharaoh and his troops pursued them aggressively and sinfully. We, when drowning became a reality for him, he said, "I believe that there is no God except the one in whom the children of Israel have believed. I am a submitter." Too late, for you have rebelled already and chose to be a transgressor. If only you could see them when they face the hellfire, they would say, uh, they would say then, woe to us. Oh, we wish we could go back and never reject our Lord's revelation and join the believers. So, um, 
So we see that um, even the disbelievers on that day, because they see it, they become certain, they, they want to repent, they want to change, but, but it is too late. And, and it's all, uh, what, what becomes interesting is that this all is lip service. And we know that on that day, it's obviously, you know, they know <laughs> who God is, they know what they did, uh, they know the issue, but um, when they realize it, and um, we learn from uh, 30 to 12 and the explanation that they would go back and they commit the same transgression. So if, it says, if only you could see the guilty when they bow down their heads before their Lord, our Lord, now we have seen and we have heard, send us back and we will be righteous. Now we have attained certainty. If sent back, they would commit the same transgressions. And then, on, um, and then another one is that, uh, and the reason for that is because uh, their secrets have been exposed. And, and we learn from the explanation is that, um, that they will not change their behavior. So even if they go back to this worldly dimension, their behavior remains the same. Which, um, which brings me to the last one is that they basically are not able to even on the day of resurrection apply the change, right? They're not able to reform because we learned from 738 and 739 is that these people are actually blaming other communities, right? And religious leaders for their, uh, for their idol worship. It says, a mutual blaming. He will say, enter with the previous communities are, uh, of jinns and humans into hell. Every time a group enters, they will curse their ancestor group. Once they are uh, all in it, the latest one will say of the previous one, our Lord, these are the ones who misled us. Give them double the retribution of hell. He will say, each received double, the retru double uh, but you do not know. Uh, their ancestor group will say to the later group, since you, have, since you had an advantage over us, taste the retribution uh, uh, for your own sins. So now this is, again, something very similar. If you uh, remember at the beginning, I was um, talking about Satan. So this is very similar to what Satan did too. So Satan up there, when... Um, um, when he was exposed, the first thing he did, he blamed God, right? He blamed God for his problem. He, he didn't, uh, you know, own it. And this is exactly what the disbelievers also do on a day of resurrection. They start blaming other people, right? Uh, and they haven't truly reformed. Um, 2555, yet they still set up beside God idols that cannot benefit them nor harm them. Indeed, the disbeliever is an enemy of his Lord. So, one lesson that I learned is that um, mutual blaming, I mean, this could be very common, right? We can easily fall into it. We can just blame, you know, children or spouses. And, 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 and we know that this, this, is, um, this is for me. I mean, this, this sounds like we're thinking about an idol or something or someone that, that could possibly harm us or benefit us. And we know that um, the disbelievers on a day of resurrection, they still, have, they still carry this problem, right, with them. And... Um, and uh, we, should, we should understand that even um, if you could go back, because we know we, uh, one audio I was listening from the messenger, he was talking about Adam and Eve, that they lived in paradise for like, you know, probably like millions of years or something, and uh, thousands of years and millions of years, and, and eventually Satan got to them, right? Because they had that problem within them. They didn't get rid of it there. So us humans, right? <laughs> if uh, if we go back and if we don't get rid of our problems, if we don't, I guess, destroy all, all, all idols in this life, in the hereafter, we're going to eventually, maybe down the line, make the same mistake, right? So that's why people who disbelieve, people who, um, uh, who realize this when it's too late, they're not admitted, right? So, and... And just imagine, like, you're basically living your life, you observing all your commandments, you're doing your practices, um, you know, um, and, and you, you think you're righteous, you think you're guided, but then moment of death comes, and then you get surprised, right? And this is the part that we need to, you know, be aware of, because this is, this is not a joke, right? So, uh, the hypocrites and those who harbor doubt in their hearts said, these people are deceived by their religion. However, if one puts his trust in God, then God is Almighty, most wise. If you could only see those who disbelieve when the angels put them to death, they will beat them on their faces and their rear ends, taste the retribution of hell. And 47:27, how will it be for them when the angels put them to death? They will beat, beat them on their faces and their rear ends. Um, this is because they followed 
what angered God and hated the things that please him. Consequently, he has nullified their works. Did those who harbor doubts in their hearts think that God will not bring out their evil thoughts? If we will, we can expose them for you so that you can recognize them just by looking at them. However, you can recognize them by the way they talk. God is fully aware of all their works. And, and the last one, uh, he will certainly put you to the test in order to distinguish those among you who strive and steadfastly persevere. We must expose your true qualities. So if we ignore all the signs, if we ignore all the warnings, if we ignore all the reminders, um, the problem will never, is never going to go away, right? So no matter how, how much we practice, how much we attend Quran studies, how much we participate, um, how much we give to charity, uh, you know, these things, um, they're there for those that actually take heed, for those that actually follow all the steps, they recognize their problem, they, um, they acknowledge it, they decide to change, and they actually reform. They truly reform because they know that that's something that pleases God. And, and if we don't do that, right, um, I mean, we're going to lose, we're going to miss out on our ch uh, last chance here. And this is something that must be taken seriously. So, um, I want to sell up. Let's pray. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. 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 La اهتنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Mideen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihtana al-Sirat al-Mustaqeen. Sirat al-Ladheena la'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim. Wala al-Daleen. Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu Ali Min Hamid Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ta'ala la sharika lah Assalamu alaykum Assalamu alaykum Do you want this to be uh, public? Huh? Do you want this to be like for global or just San Jose?